Hi everybody, it's Dan and welcome back to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making another chocolate Sailor Moon cake. Since Netflix is dropping the Sailor Moon Eternal movie, I can't wait, I'm super excited. So let's go ahead and talk about it. It is going to be a four layer chocolate cake filled with fluffy vanilla buttercream, some simple fondant decorations that is really going to help turn our cake into all things Sailor Moon. I'll be sure to throw a link to the recipe down below in the description where I'll throw everything you need to make your own delicious chocolate cake, all the tools and the steps to make your own Sailor Moon chocolate cake, and of course, all my tips and tricks so you can bake right at home with confidence. Plus, if you want even more delicious, quick, gotta have them recipes, definitely be sure to subscribe down below and turn notifications so you don't miss out every time I post a new recipe. Now let's go ahead, preheat your oven to 350 degrees, and let's get started on this delicious chocolate cake. Trust me, you're gonna love it. So grab yourself a mixing bowl and add in three cups of all-purpose flour, a half cup of cocoa powder, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, one tablespoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of salt, and two and two-third cups of white granulated sugar. Then we'll just go in with our whisk and make sure all those dry ingredients are nice and combined and fully incorporated together. Then we're gonna set those aside, grab another mixing bowl, and this is gonna be for our wet ingredients that we're gonna mix together. So let's start by adding in a half cup of sour cream, one cup of buttermilk, three eggs, one and a half cups of warm, fresh brewed coffee, three quarter cup of vegetable oil, and one tablespoon of vanilla extract. Now we're gonna mix those together, either with your whisk or with a hand mixer on a nice low speed until all those wet ingredients are fully incorporated together. And once those are nice and mixed, we're gonna bring our dry ingredients back to this chocolate cake party and pour our wet ingredients right into that bowl of our dry ingredients and mix together with a hand mixer on a low speed or whisk until you have a nice, smooth, chocolatey cake batter. And though we're looking for that smooth cake batter, try not to overmix. It's definitely okay if there's some lumps in there of flour and dry ingredients. Just try not to overmix. Then we're just gonna add that cake batter into our prepared cake pans. And I'm using two six inch round cake pans. Once those cake pans are full of batter, just place in the oven at 350 degrees and let bake for a good 35 to 40 minutes or until your cake tester comes out clean. Once your cakes have baked and they've cooled, you wanna go ahead, level and have all of your cakes, so you have all of your chocolate cake layers, and get ready to stack and fill with some delicious vanilla buttercream. After your cakes have cooled, it's gonna be time to level and tour if needed, so we can begin to fill and cover with some delicious vanilla buttercream. Take your first layer onto your cake turntable, spread a generous amount of vanilla buttercream frosting on top, and spread evenly either with your straight or offset spatula. Then you're gonna go ahead and place your next layer of cake, top with more buttercream frosting, and spread evenly. Then you'll just continue those steps for all of your layers. And once you get to that last layer of cake, you wanna invert it so the bottom of the cake is facing up and you have a nice flat surface for the top of your cake. Once your cakes are stacked and filled, grab some more vanilla buttercream because we're gonna do our crumb coat and we're gonna cover with even more buttercream to get that nice, smooth buttercream finish. If you've stacked and filled all your cake layers, your cake should look something just like mine here. You'll notice there's a fair amount of frosting hanging over the sides. I use this frosting to spread around the outside and top of my cake to create the crumb coat. The crumb coat is a thin layer of frosting on the outside of a cake that holds in the crumbs so they won't mix into your final layer of frosting. You can always add frosting to the cake for the crumb coat, but I find that having the frosting in the filling layers already spread out to the edges actually helps eliminate any potential air bubbles, which can get caught in the frosting and work their way out, giving your cake a very unlovely, kind of pimply look. Now 
So what I like to do here is I start from the bottom and while rotating my cake turntable, I like to pipe on my buttercream in an upward motion. Using a cake frosting scraper, or a straight spatula, or an offset spatula, we're going to begin to smooth over our buttercream. I find that the best way is to hold my smoothing tool upright and gently press against my cake while rotating the cake turntable. Really letting that turntable do all the work here. You'll want to continue this until you have a nice smooth buttercream coating. Now as you're doing that final smoothing, you might notice the texture of the buttercream become a bit ragged. Don't worry, take a deep breath. There's a quick and easy fix. Just grab a bowl of hot water, dip your tools into the bowl to warm them up, pat them dry, and smooth. The warm metal is gonna make that buttercream nice and soft and give you a nice smooth finish. Once you're happy with that smooth buttercream frosting finish on your chocolate cake, it's gonna be time to jump right in and get decorating for our Sailor Moon themed cake. To kick off our cake decorating, lightly brush the back of your bottom fondant border with water. Gently pick up and with the brush water side facing the cake, gently wrap the bottom of your cake and bring both ends together in the back. And just cut off any excess and secure the bottom fondant border together. Once you have that bottom fondant wrap around your cake, let's go ahead and do the same thing up top. So let's take our small red fondant strip that's about three inches long and a quarter inch wide, lightly brush the back with water, and place on the top front of our cake for our top fondant border. We're gonna trim the edges at a 45 degree angle and then lightly brush the back with water, then gently pick up, and with the brushed water side facing the cake, gently wrap the top of your cake from the back to the front. Now let's grab a piping bag fitted with a small round tip of our vanilla buttercream, and let's get ready to add some racing stripes on that top fondant collar. Take buttercream in a piping bag with a small round tip, pipe on two parallel stripes. The easiest way you can do this is to hold your piping bag in place against your top blue fondant border and rotate your cake turntable for each stripe. And we'll top off with a little yellow fondant heart. With our cake decorating coming along nice and smoothly, let's go ahead, grab our red fondant, and we wanna roll that out to about a quarter of an inch. To start our fondant bow, we're gonna take our red fondant that is rolled out to about an inch thickness and cut out four bow pieces using my template that is gonna be linked down below with the recipe. You'll need two back pieces and two front pieces. I find this very easy, very simple, especially when it comes to fondant and bows. And when you pull away that extra fondant, you should be left with four simple bow cutouts. Grab a tiny little paintbrush, a little bowl of water, because we're gonna put this right on front of our cake. Now to begin to assemble the bow on our cake, we're gonna start by lightly brushing water on the back of both back bow pieces. Gently pick up and lightly press into your cake so that the points are lined up in the middle and centered with your small pink fondant heart up top. Once you're happy with the placement of those two pieces, Lightly brush water on the back of both front pieces and gently press on top and slightly above your two back fondant pieces. Again, use the points on the front pieces to center and line up your red fondant bow. Once that red fondant bow is in front of your cake, scoot that cake to the side just a tiny little bit, grab your fondant, and let's get started on our Sailor Moon brooch. Now there's gonna be some small tiny details here, but don't worry, it's gonna be very simple, stress-free, hassle-free, and you're gonna have one awesome Sailor Moon cake. So let's start by cutting out two hearts, one yellow and one red. Then with a little bit of water, we're gonna brush the top of our yellow fondant heart ever so lightly with our paintbrush that we dipped in water. And place our red fondant heart right on top. Mm -hmm. 
back with our paintbrush, again, lightly dipped in water. We're gonna lightly brush the top of that red fondant heart. Now let's take some small yellow fondant strips and place them right on top and towards the bottom of our red fondant heart. And we're gonna create a sort of T shape here. So we'll have one for the right, one for the left, and the bottom. And no worries about any sort of gap that you might have here in your T shape because we are gonna be placing more fondant right on top. But first, we'll take our paintbrush, lightly dipped in that water, and gently brush some water on top of our yellow fondant strips. Now let's follow that up with our yellow fondant circle, and we're gonna use the larger of the two here. And we're gonna position that right in the middle of our red fondant heart on top of that T-shape that we made with our three fondant strips. And back in with our paintbrush and water, and lightly brush that on top of our yellow fondant circle and place our last smaller yellow fondant circle right on top and in the middle. Brush that with a little bit of water and place your small red fondant circle on top of that second yellow fondant circle so it's just hugging that top edge. Back in to gently brush a little water on our fondant brooch and we'll take two more smaller yellow fondant strips and sort of curve them as we place them on top of that red fondant heart. Add a little more water and take your two tiny yellow fondant circle punch outs and place those right at the tip of both of those curved fondant strips. Add it again with your paintbrush and a little bit of water because now we're gonna add on our three tiny colored fondant circles. So we'll do red at the bottom, light blue on the left, and a dark green on the right. And then we'll add our makeshift yellow fondant crown on top of our heart. Brush that with water. And add three more colored fondant circles. So we'll start from the left to the right and add orange, red, and blue. Then for the last time with your paintbrush and your little bowl of water, we're gonna gently brush the tips of our crowns with that tiniest little bit of water and give each peak of our crown its own tiny yellow circle cutout. Once you wrap up all those tiny little details and you're happy with your Sailor Moon brooch, grab a tiny paintbrush, a little bit of water, and let's get this brooch right in front of our cake. Once you're happy with that setting, add your yellow fondant crown right on top of that heart. Once everything is centered, lined up, and you're feeling great with your Sailor Moon cake, that's it. We are pretty much done with our decorating. Well, our fondant decorating, but we still need to do some buttercream and some finishing details. So first up, grab your piping bag of yellow buttercream fitted with your favorite tip. Now I'm gonna be using a large star tip. It's my go-to, it's my favorite. I enjoy it, I just think it's pretty. And we're gonna use that to add some delicious yellow buttercream right on top of our cake. Now, of course, Sailor Moon is known for a lot of things, but mostly her iconic Odongo Shield buns. For our Sailor Chibi Moon cake, we use two Madelines. For our Sailor Chibi Chibi Moon cake, we use two brownies. So I'm thinking for Sailor Moon, we're gonna use two vanilla donuts. If you're interested in using my recipe, I'll throw all that down below in the description. Very easy, very simple, oh so delicious. They come out perfect every single time. But of course, you can always go out and buy your own donuts. Why not? It's quick, it's easy. Either way, grab your donuts and let's get started on these decorations to really capture all things Sailor Moon in this delicious chocolate cake. Starting with your red buttercream, pipe on a large red circle onto each donut leaving about half an inch of empty space on the outside perimeter. Then, to add a little bit of sparkle to our Sailor Moon cake, take each donut and dip that red buttercream circle into some red sugar crystals. Now, 
Now let's go in with our yellow buttercream and pipe a yellow outline circle on that outside perimeter, you know, that half inch gap that we left open. Lastly, let's grab our white buttercream and pipe a small circle on the outside edge of that red buttercream. Once your donuts are decorated, go ahead, grab your cake, and let's add these donuts right on top. I like to place them about an inch inwards from the top edge of my cake. This way there's not too much crowding. Once those donuts are on top of your cake, that's it, you're done. You have your own Sailor Moon themed chocolate cake that just, it looks super cute and super exciting and super awesome. That's a lot of supers, but this is one amazing cake. Well, thank you all for stopping by. I had so much fun showing you how to make your own Sailor Moon chocolate themed cake. If you're a fan of Sailor Moon or if you're a fan of all things chocolate cake, or if you're excited for the new Sailor Moon movie on Netflix, definitely be sure to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out, lets me know a bacon and bread piece you all like, you enjoy, and you want to see more of. Now, if you did not like this video, I totally get it. I understand. All I ask is that you leave me a comment down below to let me know what you didn't like so I can better improve my channel, my recipes, and the type of videos that I'm sharing on the platform. Either way, if you want even more delicious recipes that you can bake at home with confidence every single time, definitely be sure to subscribe down below and turn on notifications so you don't miss out every time I post a new video. And lastly, don't forget if you make your own Sailor Moon inspired dessert or your own Sailor Moon themed chocolate cake, definitely give a tag on Instagram, you know, let me see what you're baking up in your kitchen. Alrighty, well I'm gonna go, I'm gonna grab a slice of this cake, enjoy the day, enjoy the weather, maybe watch some Sailor Moon, probably gonna watch some Sailor Moon, but as always, I will see you all in the next video very, very soon. Bye!